All right, guys, time for Q&A. I asked you to ask me some questions, running questions, and you've done that, and today I'm going to answer your questions in, a, in this Q&A video. We're going to keep it fairly brief. We don't want to talk for like half an hour, which I definitely would if I was just going to elaborate on every question. So I'm going to try and keep my answers fairly brief. If you want to know more, if you feel like my answer wasn't sufficient, send me a message on my website. The, the link is in the description or on Instagram and I'll get back to you with more details. But let's jump straight into it. First question is from Burps. Question on tempo run pacing. My training calculators give me a tempo pace based on my recent historical run data. When I do a traditional 20 minute tempo run at this pace, it feels strenuous but manageable. At 40 minutes, it's difficult to hold the pace and I cannot hold the pace for 60 minutes. Despite the definition of this pace, the tempo pace, threshold pace, being a pace you can hold for 60 minutes. What's going on? Well, first of all, check your max heart rate setting on the watch. If that's too low, uh, it'll give you wrong data probably. Secondly, I recommend the VDOT tables or the VDOT calculator. That's the best calculator in my opinion, the Jack Daniels uh, system uh, for estimating a, a threshold pace based off of a race result. Thirdly, um, it sounds about right, to be honest. 20 minutes at tempo pace should feel pretty, pretty hard, but, you know, sustainable. 40 minutes, that's pretty, that's pretty tough. Um, most people probably wouldn't do 40 minutes as a tempo run. They're probably more like 2 times 20 minutes or something like that. Um, if you're going to do 40, or when people do 40 to 60 minute tempo runs, usually what they're actually doing is more like marathon pace, which is slower than threshold. So you could do that too. 60 minutes at tempo pace is given a situation where you're in a race. All right, so think about it. It's not something you do during training. Imagine you've trained well for a race, you've built up, you've peaked and you've tapered down and you're you know, you're fresh and you're ready and it's on race day and it's all out 60 minutes. That's the test of your 60 minute uh, pace, right? So it's not something that you do in training and it's, def and it's definitely going to be very hard. Okay, so sounds about right, this tempo pace, but uh, if anything, slow it down a little bit maybe. It's better to be a little bit on the conservative side, I think, than running it too fast. So that's my two cents. Next question. Flavi, uh, she wants to know about socks, running socks. Should we focus on specific type of socks, uh, etc.? Uh, yes, definitely running socks are good. You don't want to use normal cotton socks because they hold the moisture. They can cause blisters. Your foot may sort of slip around a little bit. Running socks, uh, they, have, they, they fit the foot better. They, uh, they don't rub against um, areas where you might end up getting blisters. They're optimized for running, obviously. So my personal favorite is the Injinji socks, I-N-J-I-N-J-I, -I, -I, I think, uh, which, which is the toe socks. I just feel like it's more comfortable. My toes can splay. They feel really good. My foot's stable inside the shoe. I never have blisters, ever. Uh, I don't know if that's because of the socks, but... Definitely anything that's running socks would probably be better than anything that's like normal socks. Okay? Next up, uh, Diana, I'm an avid runner. I would like to get faster. I just changed my diet. Can't eat leafy greens, but I do eat fresh juice, bananas, oats, brown rice, lentils, potatoes. What else can I do to enhance my running performance? Thanks. Great question. Um, well, that sounds pretty good. I would definitely try to include some leafy greens anyway maybe some lettuce even if it's something if it's just that you don't like it or i don't know but experiment a little bit broccoli is really good uh, steamed broccoli for example but honestly the main thing with running performance is going to be running training diet is important super important but it's less important than your running training for your running and other factors that are really important is like sleep and uh, getting enough calories and enough carbohydrate. So honestly, that diet sounds pretty good, and I would focus mostly on just getting enough carbs and getting enough um, calories total, and then all the other things like sleep and, 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 and training. All right, another question that's in, along the same lines. 
I would love to, it's Jamie, he wants to know about what my diet looks like nowadays. He likes bananas and sweet potatoes for health, but he understands protein needs might be higher for athletes and wondering how you balance health and performance. Well, health and performance kind of is a very, they're, they're very similar. Uh, you perform well as a result of good health and you can't for, perform well if you have poor health. Uh, so they're intertwined. Protein needs are pretty easy to cover because there's protein in everything, even bananas and sweet potatoes have protein. Uh, but in terms of boosting your recovery as an athlete, beyond you know, what you need, uh, so it's, we're not talking about protein needs, we're talking about how protein can be used as a tool to stimulate um, and send certain signals in terms of uh, boosting recovery and adaptation. In that sense, personally, I like to use pea protein, isolate powder, it's just convenient and clean. Uh, otherwise, if you're vegan, lots of um, beans and lentils and stuff like that is a good way to boost it. Uh, but you don't have to go overboard or anything like that. And, you know, good varied vegan plant-based diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, good idea. Uh, and there's protein in everything. My diet nowadays, um, oatmeal, bananas, other fruits, apples, um, pasta, rice, sweet potatoes, greens, lots of different plants really. Um, yeah. St. Pete Runner says, it's just a statement really, he says that in my opinion if you can have a conversation while running you're not exerting yourself enough and you might as well walk. And I just wanted to sort of touch on that because this idea, it's kind of like the no pain no gain idea. Um, it's, it's wrong, it's just it's wrong uh, unfortunately. Uh, it feels intuitively correct but it isn't correct. 80 to 90 percent of the time spent running for elite runners is conversational. Okay, best runners in the world, 80 percent of the training at least, is conversational pace, easy pace. That's a fact, it's undisputable. From a physiological standpoint, uh, it's very easy to understand because the aerobic system is actually the main driver um, or the main energy system used for running this distance is longer than two minutes, all right? So that's what you want to train. And the aerobic system is very well activated and stimulated just from easy running. Of course, if you're just running twice a week, you could, also, you could run hard twice a week because obviously elite runners run hard several times a week and everything else is easy. So if you're running just two or three times a week, you could make those, those uh, runs a little bit harder and you get a little bit more out of it. But most of it, you would still get even just running easy. So might as well walk? No, that's that's not true. Um, that's just how it is. Those are the questions from YouTube. And then I have a few questions from Instagram just to finish it off. Lucas wants to know what my mantra is when I'm struggling. I don't have a mantra, like a specific mantra, but I, I like to tell myself that I... I need to relax or just relax. I just say relax to myself because I feel like if you get too stressed and you're struggling, you start to resist it and you tense up. So relaxing and not fighting um, the pain. That's probably the biggest thing. And not trying to get ahead of yourself, if you know what I mean. Just focus on here and now, relax, accept the pain. Um, Priska wants to know how not to get your legs tired during running. That's a great question and, and the answer is very is maybe a little bit boring because the answer is very simple. Uh, you need to train more or not necessarily more but just training will make you fitter and when you're fitter you'll have less leg tiredness. You know there could be muscular, tire, muscular tiredness, there could be metabolic tiredness um, and as you build your training, you get fitter and your ability to tolerate more longer distances, your endurance improves and your legs will not get tired from the same distance that they got tired from six months ago. And you just have to sort of stick with the process and build it up over time. Christine, my mother, wants to know, why is it that you choose to run without music? I run without music for a variety of reasons. Uh, I do listen to music sometimes, like maybe one 
out of 10 runs is with music and another two or three of those 10 runs is with the podcast. But certainly like half of my runs at least are without anything and it's just because I I feel like I lose touch a little bit with my body. I'm, it's not an idea, it's it's an actual experience that I'm having. I, I feel when I'm listening to music and doing running, I, I lose control a little bit. I need to listen to my breathing and I need to be present in my body, especially on like hard interval sessions. Otherwise, I, I'm not able to keep a steady intensity because it's just like the music distracts me. Um, but if it's really horrible weather out and I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to run, then, you know, having some nice music or a podcast to just daydream while I'm out running, um, that's a good, I like to do that sometimes. Um, but most of the time I like to be present and I like to hear my environment and that's just how I am. But it's a personal preference thing. I know my mom, she li listens to music on every run and some people do and that's fine. Last question is from uh, Jasper. He wants to know my proudest moment as a coach and as an athlete. Good question. Well, as an athlete, well, I'm generally very proud of my ability to persevere uh, despite challenges in training and to be patient and focused on my goals. That's something I'm generally proud of as an athlete. Uh, my proudest moment, probably when I was last year when I when I went sub 130 uh, in my half marathon I think that was probably so far my proudest moment I was very happy with that performance it felt great um, as a coach I have uh, several athletes uh, that I'm coaching and I'm also coaching some teenagers at the local athletics club um, track runners and Honestly, I don't think I can choose one moment as the proudest. I'm generally very proud of all my athletes and they all have moments where, where I'm extra proud. But in general, I'm just proud when I see people pursuing their goals and pushing through boundaries, uh, challenges in terms of races you know, when they get a PB or when they do a uh, run a distance for the first time and they conquer the distance. Uh, that's, of course, proud moments for me, for sure. But I'm honestly more proud about just the day-to-day -day stuff, you know, uh, when I'm coaching the, the teenagers, just to see them grow up and see them get faster and see them get better at executing workouts. That makes me proud. Um, seeing my you know, clients that I'm coaching, seeing them uh, being consistent with their training and, and seeing them sort of reaching, seeing progress just makes me generally proud. And yeah, I don't want to take out like one single moment, although there are certainly some moments that are, that stand out as like extra proud moments, but um, yeah, we're not going to sort of single out uh, one client or anything like that. I'm generally very proud of all my clients and the hard work they put in, uh, as I'm sure you can understand, Jasper, because you're also a coach, right? All right, so great questions. Uh, thanks for sending them in. I uh, hope I answered your question well. Send me a message, as I said, if you want more and a more elaborate answer. Or if you're interested in coaching, of course, contact me through my website or send me a message anywhere. And I would be happy to help you reach your goals if that's of interest. Stay tuned, subscribe, and have an awesome day. Bye.